So it's been a few weeks since I made that video on whether I should sell my NSX. Just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone for the, the comments, the insights, and all the experiences that you guys shared with me. I'm here to say that I've made a decision after reading through basically every comment on that video, there were hundreds, and taking some more time to think about what this car really means or doesn't mean to me, I've made a decision. So let's take it for a drive and I'll talk you through my thought process and whether or not I'm keeping the NSX. So I'm gonna start by telling you all a little story about the first time I learned what an NSX was. I've actually mentioned this in a video probably six or seven years ago, but it's especially relevant to this discussion. So let me go through it one more time. Back when I was probably in fifth or sixth grade at most, living in my parents' house, we had a little game room with a TV and it's what I used to play all my N64 and uh, PlayStation 2 games after school. And I had a very generous neighbor who gave me a bunch of hand-me-downs, PlayStation games, all sorts of stuff. And one day he gave me a game called Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero. Now, at that time, I had never even played Gran Turismo or Forza. Hell, I'm not even sure if Forza was out back then, but I did like cars, so naturally, this game seemed interesting to me. So I fired it up. Essentially, the premise of the game is that you're driving through Tokyo, as the name would suggest. You start out with something pretty modest. Maybe it was like an S14 or S13 chassis and you either challenge or get challenged by other street racers that you see while driving around the highways of Tokyo. And as you win races, you make money, you unlock new cars, so on and so forth. The actual game mechanics weren't particularly great, and the actual racing itself and the physics, if you can even call it that, were, well, let's just say definitely early 2000s level. But I was still hooked the moment I started playing. I was unlocking Subaru STIs, Toyota Chasers, Skylines, all sorts of great cars that obviously we don't get here in the United States. And one day, I unlocked a car that I didn't recognize. So I went into the game's showroom where you can see all the cars that you've unlocked and read little descriptions about them and see their specs and how much they cost. And so this car started spinning slowly on the showroom floor. I was looking at it. It actually started from the front and I took one look at it. My thought was immediately, what is a Corvette C5? Well, at the time I didn't know what the generations of Corvette were, but it had the pop-up headlights. It had a very sleek and sculpted front end. And I thought to myself, what is a Corvette doing in a Japanese car game? At that time, the only racing game I had played extensively was Need for Speed, which mostly has German, Italian, and American cars. But as the car continued to spin, I realized that this was no Corvette. This was something very different. It was unlike any car I had ever seen. When it hit the side profile, I was like, why is the rear of the car so long? The rear glass all the way to the end of that bumper to the, where that spoiler is, was the longest that I'd ever seen in any car. And then I looked at the name, Honda NSX. I had no idea Honda made a car called the NSX. I knew about the S2000, I knew about the Del Sol, the CRX, the Prelude, but I had never heard of an NSX. And from that point on, I was completely enamored with the NSX. Just that side profile shot was all it took to make me realize this was my dream car. Now, fast forward to 2024. I've had this car for just over seven years now. And as you saw in my last video on this topic, I'm at a crossroads. I don't know whether it makes sense for me to continue to own this car. I've put only less than 13,000 miles on it in seven years of ownership. I'm afraid to drive it. I'm even more afraid to track it. And I started to think with the, the way the values of these cars have gone up over the years, maybe it really would make sense for me to pass it on to someone who would actually enjoy it more than me and instead get into something much newer, something that I could actually drive a lot more worry-free and maybe even have a second track car 
or maybe turn my Integra into a part-time track car, mostly just a daily, and have a proper rear-wheel drive newer sports car as my primary track car. Well, after some internal debate, and like I said, reading through everyone's comments, I've come to a conclusion. sex I realized the problem wasn't the car the problem wasn't its reliability or availability of parts although those are actual issues those aren't the root cause of what made me think about selling this car the root cause was my own mentality as many of you pointed out through various comments but at the end of the day a car is a car and that is what I started to forget it's meant to be driven it's a thing that is meant to be used it doesn't have to be used every single day but a car should serve a purpose unless you're a collector or an investor who can afford to have a car like this just sitting around in a climate controlled garage with a dozen other cars for most people cars are meant to be driven what's the point of having a dream car if you don't drive it but more so than my decision to keep this car I made another very important decision and that was to make this NSX what I've always dreamed of it being, in terms of driving dynamics, mostly. This is a USDM 1991 NA1 generation NSX, the very first model year that came to the US. And for those of you in the know, that means the five-speed manual that this car comes with has specific gearing for the USDM market. The second gear goes to 81 miles an hour, the third gear goes to 113 miles an hour. Pair that to the JDM base NSX, the NA1, and don't quote me on these numbers, but I think the second gear of that car goes to maybe 72 or 73, and then the third gear barely goes over about 100 miles an hour. Don't know what sort of business analysis went into that decision to give the NSX such long gearing for the US market, if I had to guess, it's because the US was kind of known for having these long open stretches of roads and interstates. Maybe Americans were known to be lazy back then, who knows? Not having to shift as often, I don't know. But either way, it is one of the most frustrating parts of the USDM NSX driving experience. Look, I'm in fifth gear right now, going about 70 miles an hour, 3,000 RPM. The fifth gear is fine, but if I drop it down into fourth, I'm at 3,800, drop it into third. Third gear, 70 miles an hour, I'm only at 4,700, 4,800 RPM. The gearing is just too damn long, and it doesn't take full advantage of the VTEC, which kicks in around 5,000 and goes all the way up to 8,000 RPM. The first to second gear shift, if you shift at 8,000 RPM, which is the red line, the RPM at the beginning of second gear will be about 4,500 RPM. 500 shy of VTEC and far below the optimum power band of the engine. And so, obviously, you know where I'm going with this. I've already placed an order for the Japanese market five-speed short gear set, as well as a shorter Type R final drive and limited slip differential. So what took me so long to spring for these mods, if I've known during my entire span of seven years of NSX ownership that this was what the car needed? Well, to be honest, it came down to price. When I first seriously considered getting the short gear set, I realized that you can't really find these sets that easily anymore. I saw online that a few people were trying to sell their sets for anywhere from $8,000 to $12,000. And at that cost, I, I simply couldn't justify a mod that was purely to increase the sort of driving pleasure of the NSX, which is a car I already at the time wasn't driving very often. But after I made that video a few weeks ago, I was talking to some friends, some fellow NSX owners, and my friend Derek pointed out that there's actually a guy in Austria 
who runs a shop called ATR Racing. The owner of the shop basically has a bunch of NSX parts. So I reached out to him to ask if he had any short gear sets in stock. And sure enough, he had one more kit, just one. And let's just say that the price that he quoted me was a little less than half of what I thought it would cost. So it was obviously a no-brainer. I immediately jumped on it, secured the last set that he had available, and as of right now, the parts should almost be in transit on the way from Austria to California. So obviously, I'm super excited. I'm finally getting the mods that I've always wanted for the NSX but could never justify. And so what I'm hoping is that with this Game Changer mod, I'm gonna be super excited about my car again. It's gonna transform not only the feel of the car but also the straight line performance with the JDM short gears and the Type R final drive, which is a 4.23 instead of this OEM 4.06. The second gear should top out at somewhere around 68 to 69 miles an hour. And the third gear, I believe, will go just over 100 miles an hour. The NSX looks so fun to drive in all those best motoring and hot version videos of the Drift King and Gonsan sliding this car around. Can't really do that right now with this long gearing and this worn out LSD. So anyways, more to come in the following weeks and months. I'm gonna document the process of slowly turning my NSX into the car I've always wanted it to be. Visually, I don't think the car actually needs that much. The Sebring Silver is already one of my favorite colors for this car, believe it or not. I know I'm probably in the minority for thinking that, but I think this light color really it accentuates the lines of the car. While a darker color like black looks really good when it's spotless and super clean and up close, from far away it just kind of looks like a another mid-engine sports car. But with the Sebring Silver and colors like uh, Grand Prix White, there's no question, even from say 500 feet away, you know that's an NSX. It has those unique lines about it, and I love that. There are a few things on the interior that I do want to get repaired. These seats, these OEM seats are really worn out. The leather is torn. I'm looking for someone to reupholster these seats for me in a really nice material. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna go full leather or maybe some leather and Alcantara mixture. Needless to say, I am basically all in on my NSX now. I realized that for anything less than about $80,000, there's really not much I would be happy replacing my NSX with. Even something like the Cayman GT4, I recently drove another Cayman GT4. It's in a comparison video against a 991 GT3. And while I still respect the hell out of that car, and I would love to own one, it's not quite that special experience that the NSX is to me. Even driving around on a Sunday morning like this, just on the freeway around town, the NSX, it just feels so damn special. Even cars like the GT4, which to me has been the front runner for cars under $100,000. On second thought, having more experience with the GT4 now, I don't think it's that car. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I can replace my NSX with a 981 GT4. I mean, if, if I'm not willing to do that, what is that car for me? I don't think it exists. For under $100,000, I really don't think there's another car that'll satisfy the same itch. Obviously, this is not $100,000 worth of performance, but that's not what I'm after anymore. I'm not after having the best numbers. I'm after the best qualitative experience and the nostalgia factor that I just can't ignore. That story I told you earlier in the video about how I first learned about the NSX, that stuck with me for the last 20 years. So, with that being said, a lot more to come on the NSX. I am definitely very reinvigorated about my decision to, to keep owning this car and finally turning it into what I've always wanted the NSX to be. I'm gonna be doing some videos on general maintenance for this car as well as documenting my process 
of modifying it further. So more to come there. Hope you all enjoyed. Let me know what you think about my decision down in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next one.